Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my Watchmen Episode 7 recap. Of course, this will contain spoilers for everything that's happened in HBO's Watchmen through Episode 7, so if you haven't watched it, this video is not for you. The episode was titled An Almost Religious Awe, which was a callback to a line Dr. Manhattan said in the original comic about soldiers wanting to surrender to him personally after his involvement led to the United States winning the war in Vietnam. That involvement led to Vietnam becoming the 51st state and that's where Angela spent her childhood. Episode 7 had a lot of reveals, as it should since we're heading into the end of the single season story. I mentioned in my recap several episodes back that I was impressed on how they are answering enough questions to keep us engaged while maintaining enough of the big mysteries to keep things interesting, and this episode is pretty much the epitome of that. We learned a lot of important stuff, but we still don't have all the answers. For instance, we learn that Lady True does have a plan. It involves stopping the 7th Cavalry. It's tied to Will. We also have this countdown going on in the background of the Millennium Clock going live. And we get a reveal here about her daughter. Her daughter, Bianne, is actually her mother, a clone of her mother. But we don't understand why she did that. There's a scene where she's talking about her biggest failure being nostalgia. She created it so people could learn from the past and evolve. But it turns out that people want to fixate on the past. So why is it that she would be cloning her mother, which is obviously her tie to the past? We know that her and Will are working together. She tells Angela that Will came to her for her resources because the Seventh Cavalry, who are tied to the Cyclops, want to destroy and then become Dr. Manhattan. And later, Senator Joe Keen lays this out for Lori, and we see that they are, in fact, working on some kind of a device that will turn him into Dr. Manhattan. Lori ends up with Senator Keene after she goes to confront Jane Crawford. She lays out her ideas about why Will was after him, why Will had him kill himself. And to our surprise, Jane activates a trap door, takes Lori prisoner, right after she confesses that, yeah, you're right, that is what we're trying to do. But we basically decided that making Joe Keene president was kind of small potatoes and we moved on to something else. In the 7K facility, Lori doesn't really seem interested in what Senator Keene says, although this feels a lot like she's wearing her mask. He gives a spiel about restoring the country's balance. He says it's extremely difficult to be a white man in America right now, which we can only imagine is a response to being in a liberal-run world where reparations are a real thing. It's pretty funny to hear it said in this context, considering this is the kind of thing that we hear all the time in the real world. But here he takes it a step further and says, it's extremely difficult to be a white man in America right now, so I might try to be a blue one. This leads us into the biggest reveal of all that Dr. Manhattan is not on Mars, he's on Earth. And he is, in fact, Angela's husband, Cal. Which is something that people had guessed. The theory's been out there for quite a while at this point. But I don't think, at least in my interpretation of the theory, that people realize that Angela would know this. Or that Cal himself does not know this. Which means that, essentially, Dr. Manhattan has been hidden, not only from the world, but from himself. We'll have to figure out how that worked and what that means for the rest of the story. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more about that next episode. But the 7th Cavalry seems to know, Will seems to know, and both sides seem to be in pursuit of the Blue God for different reasons. In the PD files on PDpedia, we learn that Angela discovered Cal, who had a different last name at the time, was disoriented after an accident. In the next episode, we're likely going to find out about how Dr. Manhattan met Angela and how they hatched this plan. It changes everything, but in a way that it brings everything back down to Angela. And in this episode, we learned a lot more about her, how she came to be, how she picked the name Sister Knight. It's from a movie that she wasn't allowed to watch when she was a child. Agent Petey writes up a description of the movie, even though he hasn't been able to see it yet. And we learned that there was a period of time when Hollywood was making movies that were called Black Mask movies. They appealed to African-American audiences. They starred African-American actors 
Spears playing superheroes. The movie Sister Night was released in Vietnam and we saw Angela wanted to watch this but her dad wouldn't let her because he was still traumatized from his childhood being the son of Hooded Justice. The episode opened with a Ken Burns style looking documentary about Dr. Manhattan also known as John Osterman. We see that he was both worshipped and feared which is where the title of the episode came from. His accident inside the intrinsic field generator gave him actual superpowers. The United States government weaponized that and used him to win the Vietnam War. And the documentary asked the question, is he a liberating hero who single-handedly ended the war or a cold blue conqueror who decimated an entire way of life? And we see this a bit in the graffiti that we see in the background. And of course, we see this bombing, which takes the lives of Angela's parents by a young man who's obviously part of a group who's fighting against that imperialism or that colonialism that occurred after the war was over. So in her backstory, Angela watched both of her parents die right in front of her, just as her grandfather did. Her grandmother comes at some point to try to take her home to Tulsa, but she has a heart attack on the same day. And then we really don't know what happened afterwards. We know that the seeds were planted for her to be a police officer and that eventually she becomes that, but we're going to have to get more of the backstory in the next episode. I think it's interesting to see how Dr. Manhattan was regarded there and just think about how that would be. It ties in later to when we see Lady True reveal the people, their conversations in the prayer booths when they talk to Dr. Manhattan and ask him for things. We know that there was a tech backlash after the squid attack that kind of turned people against him, but it'll be really interesting to see why he came back to Earth in the first place and how he ended up meeting Angela. I liked how they made the reveal through Angela bashing with a hammer. She needs to get at the device that's hiding inside his head and I thought that this method of extraction was particularly fantastic. The whole idea is hard to wrap your head around as far as what it means about what we didn't understand about her character to this point and what that blue glow that we see starting to shine will mean for the rest of the story. Why not have it come from bashing a main character in the head with a hammer? Because Cal didn't know and she has to like coax him into letting her do it, it really made for a memorable moment and and I really enjoyed it. Outside of Tulsa, we visit Adrian Veidt. He's on trial. He has been for a year. And it stood out to me that this was the first time that the stuff in Tulsa seemed more interesting. And I almost didn't want to leave to go to Europa. And Miss Crookshanks' closing argument was great. But the whole idea of him being found guilty and being disillusioned with the whole process. At this point, it's just like, man, I want him to get back into the main story or have his effect on the main story. What's going on there isn't what I'm most interested in anymore. It's not to say that I didn't enjoy this. It's not to say that it wasn't fun all the way up until this point. I just feel like we're getting closer to the end of the main story. So I think it's just time now that the whole story with him sorts itself out. And I think overall it was a really good episode. I didn't necessarily like the idea that Cal was Dr. Manhattan when I first heard that theory, but the way I understood the theory was a little bit different. I like the idea that Angela has been hiding Dr. Manhattan a lot better than Dr. Manhattan was was hiding as a normal person. There's still a lot more that we need to understand about how all this happened, but I like the way that the mystery is centered around Angela rather than the other way around. Agent Petey does go to look for Looking Glass and he doesn't find him. I have a feeling this is going to play into him having a large role in stopping the 7K. Petey found members with Rorschach masks with one missing. I'm guessing that that means that Looking Glass has one of those and hopefully he'll play a part in undoing whatever they're planning. And it really all comes down to the idea that we've had all these seeds planted. They've been paying things off episode after episode. Can they still surprise us with something that is going to make us think at the end? The one reveal that doesn't really necessarily make sense at this point is that whenever she busted through that door, there was an elephant behind it. We've seen elephant imagery related to her. The Lady True from folklore was supposed to ride a war elephant. The symbol for her company, the T, is obviously an elephant. Her mother's book on parenting was called Pachyderm Mom. So a lot of elephant references. There's a common saying that an elephant never forgets. Are these all big clues? 
clues to what Lady T is up to. There are definitely theories out there that could fit that. Bian tells Angela that her questions are related to her dissertation that's on the adaptive function of empathy and the role of rage suppression in social cohesion. That could tie into this idea of her being a clone and the concept of generational trauma, but the cure for taking someone else's nostalgia is to connect them to an elephant? Where was Will? He didn't show up. We kind of expected him to be behind that door or something else. I don't think anyone guessed it was going to be an elephant. So we know a lot, but there's still a lot to find out. And I'm completely excited to see what they have in store for us. The trap door was awesome. I really enjoyed that. They did a pretty good job of making it seem like there might be another side to Judd Crawford's story. So I really liked how they brought that down. And while there may be something, you know, who knows, but if Jane Crawford had a trap door installed in her living room she was complicit all the way down even if Judd didn't know what was happening so I really liked how they did that I really liked that Angela took her name from the VHS cassette. I like that she explains it to June, that she looks like me. I think it's a good backstory for this character. She grew up alone in a world where she looked different. It's far away from where she came from, but it also mirrors the experience that her grandfather had in their home country as a person of color. Damon Lindelof did an interview with The Hollywood Reporter about the episode, and I will link to that in the description. It's definitely worth a read. He talks about the decisions they made in relation to making Cal Dr. Manhattan and about Angela's experience growing up and having her grow up in Vietnam. He mentions that Angela's story is all about who am I? Her journey is about answering that question. As an orphan, she has no sense of place. In that interview, some will be upset to find out that Lindelof does confirm that Dan Dryberg, Night Owl 2, will not show up in the series. Other than his owl ship and the dildo that he made for Lori, they really couldn't figure out a way to fit him into the story. Probably the funniest Easter egg of them all is that the name of the sex toy was Excalibur, which people used as a hint that Cal Abar would turn out to be Dr. Manhattan. I like that the Adrian Veidt stuff is still mysterious. They did show the statue quite a bit in this episode. I go back and forth from day to day thinking that that was him that arrived on that farm. Some days I think it's him. Some days I think it must be something else. Either way, it's good to know that we're going to find out what's going on with him and how he gets out of that situation in Europa in the next two episodes. Lady True is the big question mark still. I feel like they are giving her that role similar to Adrian Byte in the original story, like where she's there all the time. We learn about what she's doing, but we don't really know what she's up to 100%. I don't think it'll be a one for one where she does exactly the same kind of thing and gets the exact same kind of results. But I think that I'm very intrigued to find out what her and Will are up to. Looking forward to Looking Glass's return, Will's return, how Angela keeps Dr. Manhattan from falling in the hands of Senator Keene and the 7th Cavalry. Everything is feeling pretty good at this point. Let me know in the comments what you think Dr. Manhattan's going to do now that he is back to being a part of the story. What are we going to learn about how they met? What are we going to learn about what the 7K is doing? How they implement their plan? What Lady True's doing? What's going to happen when she activates the Millennium Clock? Were you a fan of the cowl as Dr. Manhattan? in theory do you like this better the way that it turned out or what are you thinking now that we know please like this video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i'll have a trailer breakdown and we'll talk about what we saw there in the next couple of days thanks for watching i'll talk to you soon